Hi, everybody. It's so nice to uh, connect with you and to see some of your faces. And it sounds like we're all around different areas of the, of the world right now. Um, I'm on, I'm using my cell phone on the stand because it's easier than my computer. So in order to see you, I have to scroll. So feel free to also um, chat, either unmute yourself at times or um, put in text in the chat. But um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Tamara and um, I'm currently in Costa Rica in a very remote jungle called the Osa Peninsula. You can kind of see it behind me. I'll give you guys a little tour at the end. And um, I've been teaching meditation for a while. I've been uh, practicing. Meditation was kind of my first uh, pra healing practice that I got into when I was younger. Um, it had an, uh, the first time I ever meditated, it, it had an immediate, um, such a power, a immediately powerful effect on my nervous system and how I was feeling that um, I knew that it was a practice I needed to continue. Um, and since then, I've dived into a lot of different modalities. I first learned transcendental meditation from my father um, when I was young, but then throughout the past, you know, 10 plus years, I've learned a lot of different practices from a lot of different people, from traveling to different countries like India, Peru, uh, the Amazon, and teachers in the States. Um, I also practice a lot of different physical modalities like breath work and yoga and exercise, surfing, and um, writing. And I, I, at this point in my life today, I have a whole variety of tools and practices that I use on any given day. And um, I would say the biggest tool that I use now is my intuition. And my intuition is what guides me into knowing what do I need today? What do I need to practice today? And I say that because a lot of different modalities have kind of these rigid um, instructions, or it can appear that way. Like if you learn transcendental meditation, you're, you're guided to practice meditation twice a day. And some people feel like you need to meditate at those specific times every day. And for me, that was that was never something that worked. The rigid rules don't work for me. Um, I need a lot of flexibility, and I like to change what I'm doing every day. So, uh, for me, what works is to has been to develop a relationship with myself that's become so deep and intimate that my my own inner voice is my best guide in telling me what I need that day. And every day looks a little different. So we can talk more about that later if you guys have questions um, at the end. But first, I want to kind of guide us all into an experience and to help us become present here right now together. And then um, I'm happy to, to chat for as much time as we have at the end about, about all of it. So first, I would just like to know if this is anybody's first time ever meditating. And if so, maybe just put in the chat um if this is your first meditation or not and does anybody have any questions to begin before we start and if so can you either unmute yourself and ask or or put it in the chat okay i'm gonna take that as no questions Okay, so let's have a little uh, experience, shall we? Hi, Dash, good boy. Okay, <laughs> so um, today the not your first rodeo, Steve. Awesome. Um, so today that uh, the jungle is going to be our um, guide. And this is gonna be a really easy, gentle, feel good meditation. And um, so first right now, just 
feel around you? What have you, how have you set yourself up to be here right now? What are you sitting on? Um, if you're somebody who has lower back problems, how have you taken care of yourself? Are you, if you have lower back issues, your hips want to be a little bit above your, I'm sorry, your waist wants to be a little bit above your knees, your hips above your knees. And um, if you're leaning against any kind of wall or sitting on a couch, you're going to want a pillow behind your lumbar to support you. And even if you don't have back problems, that's a really nice way to set yourself up. So we start here at the foundation because it's the foundation that allows us to, our body to relax, our parasympathetic to um, engage. It's, it's when, when our body feels supported, then it knows, okay, we're safe. We're not in fight or flight. We can chill and relax. And as our body relaxes, then our mind will start to calm down. So it starts at the physical level. So everyone just take a moment to notice what you're sitting on, how you take care of yourself. And if you need an adjustment, you can do that now. And then I just want everyone to kind of take a moment to tune in and notice how you're feeling. So if you want to close your eyes, if anyone is experiencing extreme uh, anxiety, it might be better for you to have your eyes open and just pick a soft uh, point, soft point of focus. So either, you know, at a plant behind me or, or somewhere on the floor and you have... <laughs> so let's take a moment to tune into our body together. Let's take a nice deep inhale. And then just exhale through your mouth. So tune into your body. What, what are you feeling right now? How's your stomach feel? How's your lower back feel? You know, um, if you notice any feelings that you might be experiencing and where you might be feeling them in your body, if you're tired, if you, you know, if you're fear, if you're stressed, or if you're excited. Explore through your body what it feels like in your body right here and right now. Again, um, meditation can be eyes open or closed. So if you feel that it's best for you have your eyes open right now, then just pick a, a nice spot to, to kind of have a soft gaze. And if it feels okay for you to close your eyes, then let's just let our eyes settle closed. And just start to bring attention to your breath. Let your inhales and your exhales lengthen. And let's bring our attention to the tail of our spine and where what we're sitting sit in. Seated on, so feeling the support below you, whether it's a couch or a chair or a floor. Noticing the support, the textures of the support, where exactly the support is aligning with your tailbone and your sitting bone, and how the support is helping your lower back or pelvis to tilt. And then below you, find, navigate your way down below you, below maybe the floorboards of your house, wherever you are right now, and find the earth below you. No matter if you're in a city, in a skyscraper, Wherever you are in the world, the earth is below you. So using our imagination to move downward below us to feel and find the earth. And notice how that might affect your breath. So as you navigate your way down into the earth, maybe explore the soil and what creates the sturdy soil, perhaps some tree roots, mycelium. And if you're in a city, this might take more imagination, but the earth is down there, so keep exploring below. 
Allow your hips to relax and your belly to relax. And together, let's just take a nice deep inhale through the nose. And exhale everything that came before this. So again, let's inhale through our nose. And exhale anything that has to come after this. So again, a nice deep inhale through our nose. And let the exhale help you drop into yourself. Land into yourself with the exhale. Let your breath be natural. Observe how you feel. Again, keeping that connection to the earth below you. Let your belly soften, your shoulders relax, your forehead relax. And bring your attention to the very top of your head. As if you had a string from the top of your head going up, that, that point right at the top. Just bring your attention right there. And then at the same time, trace that line down your torso, down the middle of your body down to the tail of your spine and bring your attention to the tail of your spine. So here you are at your center, finding yourself in this center and the access of yourself. Feeling the earth below you, let's begin to listen to the sounds around us. Noticing all the different sounds that you can hear. Without identifying each sound, just simply observing them like an orchestra. Feeling how the sounds reverberate against your eardrum. Feel the resonance of the sounds as they travel through your body. The resonance of the sounds through your body. Noticing the sounds that are closest to you. Perhaps the sound of your breath and your heartbeat. The sound of a friend. The sound of your own nervous system. The sounds of your thoughts. And listening for the sounds that are the furthest away from you. Noticing the sounds that are the furthest away from you. And now listening to all the sounds in between, the entire orchestra that is playing in this present moment.
Notice thoughts as they arise. And just observe them just as you're observing sounds effortlessly and easily without any judgment or name calling. Thoughts will come and go and they'll pass on their own when they're ready to. And when they do, you just easily come back to here and now. So now let's listen for the silence within the sounds. So it's as if there's this ocean of silence and each sound is a wave that rises and falls from this ocean of silence. Listening for the silence within the sounds. Noticing the silence within your breath and the silence within your thoughts. So it's as if each thought, each breath, and each sound is a wave that rises and falls from this ocean of silence. Listening for the silence within it all. Noticing your thoughts as they arise, observing them with compassion and love, and coming back to exploring the silence within the sounds. Feel your feet. Feel the earth below you. Observe the patterns of thoughts, the patterns of sounds, patterns of your breath. Allow for ease and space. And imagine releasing anything not serving you, any tension in your body, just releasing through the earth below you right here and now. Take a few moments in silence, and then I'll guide us back out at the end.
Let's all take a nice deep inhale through our nose. And exhale out the mouth. Again, releasing any last remaining tension in your body, just imagining it dripping down into the earth below you, out through the soles of your feet, through the tail of your spine. Tension is melting from the body. And you're just giving it to the earth. You can use it as compost to regenerate soil and grow new life. Feeling that earth below you, continue to deepen in your inhales and your exhales. Feel your skin, the textures of the clothing against your skin. Take in the temperature of the air. The sounds. Feel your feet each of your toes. Notice the point between your eyebrows, that space. Relax your forehead. Continue to deepen your breaths, maybe inhale something you're grateful for. Exhale, let that go. You want to do that a few more times, inhaling things that you're grateful for, exhaling, letting them go. And on your last inhale, inhale, moment of gratitude for yourself, you're taking a moment to be here with yourself right now. Connect with yourself. Deep within. Continue to breathe. As many in elongated inhales and exhales as feel as comfortable. And as you're ready, you can slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Embody a sloth. Move slowly. Maybe stretch from side to side. Feel into your body what you need right now. And when you're ready, slowly begin to lift your gait. Continuing to feel that earth below you. So feeling in this space that you've just cultivated for yourself right now, in my, in my daily practice, this is a moment where then I have a notebook near me and I love to write. The medicine of meditation is in these moments afterwards and in the day afterwards. The actual meditation and what comes up is really none of our business. That's just the, the process. But now we get to... Uh, notice what it does for us. The clarity of thought, any presence that you feel. And then this is what to carry with you throughout the day. And remembering this stillness and calmness is here and available. We just did a little bit of a longer meditation, but you can also find it in like three minutes or with a few breaths. How's everybody doing? Does anybody want to um, share anything? Or something on your mind that you want to talk about or you want me to talk about? Or don't be shy. And also, you don't have to say anything.
So if anyone new came in wants to take himself off video, you're welcome to do. And if you do want to share anything, please feel free to unmute yourself. Um, this is obviously a very potent time in our in our collective experience. Thank you for the fact. Thank you, Steve. Um, and I think it's important to uh, to express that there's um, that that this moment is so potent, and that we can really use this time to dive inward and to uh, connect with ourselves and and listen. This is a really important time for listening. And I think it does a disservice for people if they feel that this is something that we just need to wait out because we don't really want to sit around and wait for anything, right? Like life is happening now. And, um, and so without, so how do we, how do we move through a time without feeling like we're waiting for something to happen or waiting for something to return to a way that it used to be when that's probably not possible. But instead, how do we use this time, you know, to really, uh, at, at the very least, deepen our connection with ourselves and, and who we are. And I think like a lot of us can relate that there's been those times in our life where we're like, I wish I could just press the pause button and catch up. And I feel like this is a global, the pause button has been pushed for a lot of people. Obviously not everyone, like doctors and nurses who are working around the clock. Um, but for those of us who, who this is more of a pause for, um, you know, this is a time where you can really harness, harness the power of this moment. And, and for me, feelings are an access point to uh, my own understanding and knowledge. So I, um, I really emphasize that this is an important time to feel everything. And, you know, meditate, I don't like to call it meditation, but taking time to your, for yourself in these moments of silence to go within and to feel into feelings and notice what comes up is, is um, a really great use of time right now. And the access points of feelings, if you go into the feeling, if you're sad and you let yourself cry, it's going to allow you, yourself to process this moment. And, and we could consider this moment a, tra a trauma, like it's like a global trauma. And the way to not, the way to um, process the trauma is to move through all the stages of feelings in a trauma. So we might have the fear and the fight or flight feeling, but then we continue to move through those feelings. We eventually will come through them and feel peace and tranquility and laughter on the other side as you guys might experience in your life, sometimes you could cry and then like a moment later you just start laughing. And the laughing on the other side of the crying is a signal that the that the trauma or that the um the feeling has been integrated. So if you're still feeling the pain and the sadness, then the feeling hasn't been integrated yet. So you just have to keep going into it. But the minute you experience the the peace or the joy of the laughter on the other side, that's a signal that it's been integrated. So if you don't feel that, then it just means that you, whatever is happening right now, you're making it wrong. Um, does that make sense? So right now, um, we can consider this also like, you know, what do they always say is that um, there's a, a few biggest stressors in people's lives. One is moving, one's having a baby, I think even changing job. Well, we can consider this as like a, a very big transition, like one of those kinds of transitions. And so how do we move through these transitions? And most importantly, how do we adapt? So we're just learning how to adapt right now to the new climate and the new situation. Um, obviously, there's not always going to be a global pandemic, but there will continue to be very big challenges that we face as a collective. And so how do we how do we move through them, become stronger, and adapt? And so this is one practice that can really help you if you want to 
you know, take a moment every day to be in silence with yourself. If you have the time right now, take more than a few minutes. Um, you can do a simple meditation like this. If you want to learn up and then there's also a ton of other meditations if this one didn't resonate with you as much. Does anybody have any questions? Now's a good time to ask. If anybody needs more support in developing, you know, your own practices or, or processing through this time, please feel free to reach out. Um, glad you enjoyed it, Sophia. And um, I, I do private sessions, we do group virtual sessions, and um, I will leave retreats again once there's not a crisis happening. Thank you. And uh, somebody want to talk? I want to give you guys a little, um, there's Talia. I want to give you guys also a little jungle tour, jungle tour before we get out. Talia, did you want to say something? No, thank you all. We really, Really appreciate it. I hope you had a lovely experience and we'll be sending the recording out to everyone as well with info about Tamara and her work, personal work, if you'd like to learn more. Thank you. Thank you. So I will give you guys all a nice to see you all and to you guys in the Bronx and in New York, thinking of you and sending you guys so much love and it will get better. Um, but for now, let me give you a little nature tour. So here we are. It's very hot here. It's a uh, dry season. We just had our first rain in two months. Dashy! And uh, these are coconut trees. So this is all pretty much primary rainforest where I am. Um, the Osa Peninsula is um, mostly a uh, a national park called the Corcovado National Park, but there's this one, er there's a few areas where people have um, built residences that's not in the park. And I don't know if you can see all the way down there, but we're all on solar. There's no electricity, there's no um, power paved roads. We're on a dirt, we're off a dirt beach road and we have solar power that powers all of this. And I'm here at this little eco lodge um, I, Sophia, I live here uh, pretty much. I'm based here for the, this is my second year that I've been based here. I, I'm helping my friend develop this eco lodge down here where, where I am. And I'm leading retreats down here. And I, I, I had a hotel in, in uh, Hollywood. It was a, a wellness hotel called the Beehive. And I, and I let it go a couple of years ago. And this is just kind of where I ended up. So I take it kind of moment by moment. But for the moment, yeah, I'm based here often. Um, I travel to New York and LA frequently. So oftentimes, like this is a giant mango right, tree right here. And this is oftentimes, the mango season's in about a month or so. I don't know if you can see the baby mango starting to grow, but there's always monkeys in this tree and in these coconut trees here. There's often monkeys in them. It's the hottest part of the day right now, so there's not as many animals out. But um, I'll give you a little tour. We'll go downstairs. This is the lodge I'm at. And so I'm up in a tower here. You can see these incredible trees all around. Oh, there's a toucan. Did you guys see that? Did you see that, Talia? Up here, oh, there's spider monkeys. I don't know if you guys can see them, but up there, I can't seem to zoom, but there are uh, spider monkeys in that tree up there. See, that one just went across. And then there's a toucan right here in this tree. Oh, you can hear the spider monkeys. 
Sophia asks, do you live there full time? Wow, beautiful. It's amazing. Wonderful. Yeah, you heard me, right? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I did. Thank you for answering that. It's absolutely beautiful. Hi. Nice Hi. to see you. Oh my gosh. Paradise. Can you guys see that toucan right there? I can't. Uh, but I kind heard of little noises. Yeah, those were the spider monkeys going by here. I wish I. If, Amazing. If I went back up, I could maybe get that toucan, but it's kind of hidden in the tree. Anyway, I'll keep walking. Uh, 